California's central coast is a rich mosaic of unique environments that are home to a spectacular array of wildlife. From tidal invertebrates that inhabit the harsh, rocky shores, to migratory birds that spend their winters foraging in complex estuaries, and marine mammals like sea lions and seals that seek shelter from the open ocean in harbors and along beaches. But one animal in particular plays an important role in these ecosystems, the southern sea otter. Sea otters are a keystone species whose intense predation on invertebrates like crabs and urchins helps to regulate healthy coastal ecosystems. Not too long ago, however, sea otters were a missing piece of the central coast. And in their absence, a few neighbors moved in. During the 17th and 18th centuries, sea otters were hunted for their prized fur to the point of local extinction throughout most of their habitat range. Small remnant populations endured this period of overharvest, and their descendants eventually reclaimed pockets of their former range along the central coast. In the otter's absence, however, human development and industry changed the landscape from what these animals were accustomed to a human-dominated landscape. Southern sea otters now face a new dilemma to their survival. The dilemma is that our coasts are crowded, and in many areas, sea otters are urban wildlife. But in these high areas of human density along the central California coast, sea otter habitat and where humans like to recreate overlap. Their world has become more urban. A dedicated handful of Central Coast community members have devoted their careers to facilitating human coexistence with sea otters and promote an idea of community that includes our wild neighbors. I worked as a sea otter biologist uh, in the field watching wild tag sea otters for 15 years. So nobody needs to be convinced that sea otters are engaging, but I think that I find them engaging in a very different way than, oh, that's a cute critter uh, kind of thing, just watching their day-to-day -day lives. And the intimate window into the lives of just an absolutely fascinating, intelligent, individualistic critter uh, that I had to spend long, long days um, in the field watching. And that really gave me a connection. And I never left. I never left after that. I was hooked. And in a way, that really fuels my passion for what I do today with Sea Otter Savvy. We are counting sea otters for the Southern Sea Otter range-wide census. We got, ooh, a bunch of moms gathered together. We are literally trying to count every otter. So hashtag every otter counts. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who manages recovery of the southern sea otter, gets an estimate of their population status, how well they're doing. So it's a really, really fundamental component of sea otter conservation. The inception of Sea Otter Savvy is basically sea otter scientists, advocates, uh, managers had been convened to try to address human disturbance to sea otters. People engaging in marine recreation that are getting too close and causing sea otters to move away and waste energy. Being a sea otter is very expensive and they are living paycheck to paycheck, energetically speaking. So they do not store fat as blubber like most marine mammal species do. And they actually rely on their thick, dense fur and a unique high metabolism to maintain their internal body temperature despite living in cold Pacific water. Sea otters are constantly grooming themselves, right? Making sure their fur is able to hold warm air and the cold water never touches their skin. The next thing you can do is you can sleep. You can reduce energy loss by resting. And the last solution to this energetic dilemma is to eat more. If you're burning through calories to stoke that high metabolism, you're going to need to consume a high amount of food to keep going, almost like an athlete. Every disturbance not only wastes the otter's precious energy in their effort to flee, but prevents them from hunting while they're in a state of alarm. Over time, each disturbance caused by members of an adoring public adds up to a point where our fascination with sea otters threatens the animal's survival. 
that's the key question, right? How to cohabitate. To be sea otter savvy is just to be um, mindful around sea otters and to be respectful of our wild neighbors. And so just as I would respect my neighbor who lives next door to me, I wouldn't you know, directly walk into their house, but you're gonna respect them still. You're gonna read their behavior. You're gonna be uh, a human being enjoying the wild, but also realizing that you're in our wild neighbors homes. A good way to know if you're disturbing a wild sea otter or any wild animal for that matter is if they're looking at you, it's showing that you're a little too close. They're spending more energy than they can probably expend for the day. So they are affected by presence. They, they don't understand our behaviors and so we need to be responsible in noticing the behaviors that these animals are having and adjusting our behaviors on behalf of that. The most effective tool was going to be a directed program that was trying to collect research to better understand what human disturbance looks like, just to characterize it, and to also understand what its impacts are to sea otters, and then to use what we learned through that process to conduct outreach. And outreach is really the focus. And that's a, a really broad term for a lot of different tools that we use to try to educate people. So to be sea otter savvy is to know about behavior, be able to recognize what a disturbance uh, looks like or what it might look like, and to adopt a behavior that, that really seeks to avoid causing that kind of disturbance. I'm not trying to um, create restrictions that are gonna negatively impact their business. We're taking care of the wildlife and we're taking care of these community members and these businesses and that benefits the overall community of which sea otters are a part. So we've been working very closely with Sea Otter Savvy and they have a certification program uh, that's primarily focused on avoiding wildlife disturbance. So we underwent training uh, explaining how far away to keep from the sea otters, what to notice, with the behavior of the sea otters if they're starting to be disturbed. So not only are we making sure that the animals are getting the rest and not being disturbed, but then we also see ourselves as educational outreach to reach the public, the people that are on our tours, and hopefully they'll spread the word as well. Jenna and Sea Otter Savvy's work goes beyond conducting research and outreach. As the species recovers, she trains the next generation of sea otter biologists and stewards. They're looking at what sea otters are eating in different parts of the bay. Over the last 10 years, sea otters have mostly lived in the harbor area here where, with all the human elements, and they're just starting to more actively use the estuary, the back bay in the south part of Morro Bay. And so we're really interested to see how their foraging differs. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. you guys saw your sand moment. Our mission is to collaborate with communities and instill a sense of stewardship because once we see sea otters as part of our broader community, this idea of community, respecting your neighbor, and coexistence goes beyond just sea otters, but to all wildlife. We just need to broaden our view and definition of community. I often say that if I can really integrate these principles with all of the coastal communities where sea otters are living in California, I won't really be necessary anymore. The communities can really do this. I'm just basically here to foster and support that. And my hope is someday I'm just in the background and the communities are really the stewardship leaders. You can support Sea Otter Savvy's mission for coexistence by making a donation. 